In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the popularity of day trading and why so many people want to day trade, but they kind of just don't understand the concept of why we go out there and use it. So basically, just a quick little overview of what day trading is, is exactly what the word stands for, day trading. There is swing trading, there's investing, there's options trading, but in the art of day trading, we actually go out there and just get in and out of stocks every day. Now, there's different types of day trading. There's scalping. There is short-term day trading. There's just overall day trading over the course of the day. But when we're pretty much what we're looking for is just making a day's pay. So we're not looking for a 2% a day or, or I want to make 20% of my money at the end of the year. Day traders basically work with small amount of shares and find these stocks that are very volatile over the course of the day. But the reason to go out there and find out which ones that are more successful than others well, that's what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to talk a little bit about how we find these stocks, what makes sums more tradable versus sums that are not tradable, where we look for those stocks in the market. But day trading is a very, very popular in today's industry, in the trading community, because everybody wants to learn exactly how to actually find them, why people do them, and why it's such a great job. Because you are your own boss, you can come and go whenever you please, but you have to know how to play the game of day trading. Now, I've been doing this for over 35 years. I'm one of the original day traders of the industry. Back in the day, we were called Soze Bandits. And that was just a term that we use as for certain execution systems to trade these systems. But other than that, day trading is pretty much has not changed. The big difference that have really changed from the old days versus today is you don't have to be licensed. You don't have to get a job at a brokerage firm. I mean, I live here in New York. The financial capital world is where we basically, where it all started. But you don't have to do any of that. You could do that. You could do this anywhere over the world. And the beauty of it with today's technology, you don't have to pay those high ticket charges. You don't have to buy those expensive tools that we needed to go out there and trade it. But what you do need to know is how to play the game. And that's what we're going to be covering in this video. Chapter two, basic of day trading. Well, here we're going to talk a little bit about liquidity and the volatility of the market. And the big thing about being a very good trader is that you obviously need to find a certain stocks that you want to trade. And the way we do that is we work through the big percentage gainers and losers. And most people go out there and they keep continue maybe trading the same stock. But the problem is sometimes those stocks don't always move every day. I mean, you have the fabulous seven stocks, but you know, depending if it's an earnings announcement, maybe there's a split or whatever it may be. They're not always the most highly volatile stocks. Now, don't get nervous on the volatility part about it because volatility is actually a good thing because the stock ain't moving. You're not going to make any money. The big mistake of the basic of day trading where people make a mistake is they just don't know exactly what and how to find the ones that do something that we call the three T's. Now, what are our three T's? tradable trend and trap and we're going to cover those three t's in this video so basically the first t is probably the most important that makes up about 50 percent of the failure rate that t means tradable what exactly does that mean well it's about finding stocks that have good spreads good volatility good volume good iceberg orders meaning big block orders that we use on level three level four good support resistance levels, something that has very good tier sizes, which is are the tier sizes on the orders on the level two. So just basically something that if you ever made a mistake, we always look at as a, as a day trader of knowing, can we even get out of the stock? Is there enough orders out there? Listen, we always want to do something that's called, you know, hit the bid and hitting the bid is selling it to somebody else on the, that on the buy side. Are there anyone out there willing that we could sell it to enough buyers out there at every tier size? So 50% of the people fail by just not finding the stocks, how to trade. And that's why we cover, which is the first T, which is tradable. As you can see from this window right here, we are looking at a basic level two screen. And this is one of the big important T's. So right here, if we just look, if I could just draw a couple of things right here, these right here are you buyers. And these are your sellers. So you have three very important columns. Now, when we go out there and trade a specific stock, like we're looking at a stock like NVIDIA, there are three, those three columns are market makers and exchanges, price, and the amount of shares. Now, the way we look at this before we ever consider trading a stock, we want to make sure that we could find a stock 
that has very good price levels, good tier sizes. And in this example, when you look at it in NVIDIA, even though it being a very popular stock in today's market, there are things that make it very untradeable. First of all, you'll see that the stock is moving very quickly. It is a little bit on the expensive side. Not that we would not consider trading it, but there are a lot of other stocks out there that will give you something called less risk and more reward. For example, look where it says right here where it says size. And you'll notice here in size that there are a lot of ones and twos. Everything there is multiplied by 100. So by going out there and buying something that there's only 100 shares, you see $135 stock, there's only 100 shares available. But when you go to a, certain, a different stock, let's just say like a, I don't know, um, a CLSK, for example. Here you have something a little bit less expensive. You'll notice the spread is a little bit tighter where you're seeing a buyers at 1950 versus 1951 where some other stocks, the spreads are a lot bigger. When you deal with more expensive stocks, it makes things a little bit more volatile. And even when you deal with even something less expensive, let's just say like this stock right here, you'll notice that the spreads are a little bit tighter they're a lot less expensive, but if either one of these stocks move 50 cents on 1,000 shares, as long as you know you can get 1,000, 50 cents, 500, $500, over the course of the years, $100,000. What's the difference between 1,000 shares of this stock, MESA? That will cost you 1,500. You want to deal with a stock like Apple? You have to spend 200. You want to, spend, you want to buy a stock like NVIDIA? You have to spend 136000 to make the same $0.50, cents, and it just doesn't make sense as a risk to reward. This is what day traders look for, and this is probably 50% of the failure rate. So before you ever go to a stock or ever, ever want to trade a stock, you want to make sure the stock has good spread, good volume, good tier sizes, and that is about 50% of the failures of today's market. Another very big issue people have is when they're looking at an execution system is that there are so many different types of execution systems or brokerage firms offer you, but they pretty much have all pretty much the same tools and bells and whistles. And to be a beginner when it comes out, you don't need all these bells and whistles. So I just want to kind of clarify a couple of things that you basically need in trading. So here you have just a few windows that are very important. Now you have what's called a intraday chart, which is right here. You have your level two, which is down here. You'll have something which is a percentage gainers and losers is where we find our stocks, where we were looking earlier to find what makes those stocks stay trading, uh, to trade that are moving, that make the volatility in the market. You have your watch list. So let's just say you're watching a specific stocks. Maybe, you know, you're looking for something you like. You have a watch list. You'll have a one day chart. So you kind of get a little bit of a perspective of what the stock has been doing over, over the course of the year. And then obviously the two main windows down here at the bottom, which is our level two window and our time and sales, which I've always found a lot of people neglect to have on their system. Now you have to understand everything works off the level two. From the level two quotes that we get from here, if there's any transactions, it comes over here. From there, from the time and sales, then it goes up to here on the intraday chart. And then as the day goes on, those charts will lead to here, which is the long-term chart. And then that's basically all you really need to get started as a day trader. You don't have to worry about indicators right now. You have to worry about all these heat maps or anything that all these bells and whistles they have. Basically, these simple windows is all you need to get started. Chapter three, developing a day trading strategy. To start with a day trading strategy, Basically, as a day trader and as you want to be a day trader, it's all about following those stocks that have good volatility. So we're going to look at a couple examples, show you exactly what we look for, what makes those stocks very tradable and why we would trade one versus the other. Because the strategy behind this trading is, once again, is just getting the crumbs on the floor. Big traders trade millions and millions of shares. You're not going to compete them, but what you can do is you could join them. So in this video, as we move on, I'll show you exactly how we find those big iceberg orders. But to do that, you got to have a strategy, and the strategy behind trading is just following the support resistance levels and just following the money. 
Now, what you have right here is we're going to look at some stocks that are making some nice little moves. So we're going to look at some of the things, the strategy behind it. So as of today, every day is a different day to trade. So we're going to work off our big percentage gainers. And in those big percentage gainers, you'll start off and see stocks like this one that's moving today, a stock called AS. NS. Now, I don't care what the company does as a trader. Actually, obviously, it doesn't really matter what the company does. All we care about is making money that's going to give us the least amount of risk with the high amount of reward. Now, if you notice down here, you have a stock that has some really good volume. It's about 90% traded up about 45%. Now, the thing is this. What is the stock doing over, over, over the course of the day? Not really doing too much. It did come back down and kind of really didn't have a really good trend. So this wouldn't be a good example of a stock, even though it is the most popular stock out in the market. So what we like to do is, as a trader, we work our way down the list. And what we're looking for is stocks that have a good trend. Now, what you'll notice over here on this trend right here, I'm going to move this picture right there, is that you'll see right here that this stock, CMTL, started around 250, around about 9, 9.30 this morning, and had a really nice little run all the way up to a price around 450. Now, if you do the math, 250 minus 450 is a two dollars $2 run. Two dollars on a thousand shares is a pretty substantial profit of two thousand dollars every day. You talk about a half a million dollar salary, but we don't need a half a million dollars. You know, we just want to make a day's pay. Let's say you're looking to make that, you know, which an average day trader kind of looks for is like a dollar a day. So even if you get it here at three and you sell it there at four, you did pretty well. But the question is. Why did it go up? Well, we're going to talk about that as we move forward into this video. The key part about what we're covering right now is we're still covering the first T, but now we're leading to the second T. And that second T is tradable, and then it's the trend. The trend is, you know, what makes the stock go up and want to make sure you're on that trend side. So this is what we're looking for, a stock that's continued to trend. Now, there are a lot of other stocks that are moving. This is one of several, but does it mean they're all moving? You have a stock like here, number third on the list, up about 67%. GOVX, nice trend, nice push. But is it less risky as CMTL? Well, when you look over here down at the level two, you notice that stock has very good a lot of deep buyers, a lot of deep sellers, very good spread, very inexpensive. These are things that we're looking for. Now, let me give you one more, and then we'll, we'll, uh, I'll show you what makes a stock not tradable. Here's a stock that's moving PIXY. Now, what I don't like about this stock and why I would not consider it is if you look at the trend, it's moving beautifully, making a new high for the day, moving very nice. But what you don't notice on the stock is this. Look at the chart and look how spotty it is. That means the stock's not trading that much in uh, orders. You look over here at the volume, we're looking at a stock around that only trade about 1.2 million shares. Now, this is not like the other stocks that were trading over, you know, 50 million, 25 million. And we're already about three o'clock almost into the, we've got an hour left into the close. That is something you want to stay away from because what happens with stocks like this is that then you'll get what's called these big spreads. So if you wanted to buy it, you're going to have to pay this price. And if you're wrong, you want to get out of it, you have to sell at that price. So here you are. A stock is not what we look for, like two, three cent spreads. Now we're seeing a stock that might have a 10, 15 cent spread. 15 cents on a thousand shares means you could lose up to $150 just to get into the order and then to get out of it. And it really is not more, you know, less risk with a bigger reward. And that is some of the ways how we look at it. Now, can you trade a brand name stock? You can. You could look at a stock like Tesla, which is a very popular stock. But once again, issue is stock is not as much has as good volatility as the other stocks did at a, a fraction of the price. You did, you're investing a lot more money to do it. You're dealing with a bigger spread. And most importantly, you're dealing with more high-frequency trades, more algorithms, which makes the stock that much more riskier to trade. So now the big thing also that comes along with trading is risk management. Now, this is some of the biggest failure rates of the people that I've trained over the industry because, listen, not everybody's successful. But the reason why people fail is they get greedy and get cocky, and they just don't have the good money management skills. And that just comes with time and experience. So let me show you a little bit, a couple of things in, that we do for money management 
so we don't get in that trouble of something that is going to be a little too risky, which is going to give us a very, very high risk with a very, very little reward. Now, getting back to a stock like NVIDIA, you'll notice that the stock is a very popular stock. It has some really big moves, but the issue is with the stock is it's expensive. And unless you have very deep pockets, you'll notice that the stock can get extremely volatile. Some people say, well, I won't buy as many shares. But the thing is, then you want to consider doing as more of a swing trade, maybe as a long-term trade. But as a day trader, when we look at something like this, we have to be very careful of what we get ourselves involved in. If you look over here, down here at the level two, you'll notice that we use this only specifically to kind of capture the spread. And the spread here could range between you know, and you could see the level two moving quite quickly. It's ranging between maybe three to five cents. It might even move even faster depending on what time of the day. Now, usually you'll notice here when the market opened up, the stock had a good volatility from 131 to 134, which is not bad. And then it had a nice little move here in the middle of the day, but it doesn't move as much as the day goes on. Now, as you get closer to the end of the day, the stock will get more volatile because there are some very good times to trade. And that's why we have what we built here, which is called our cyber clock, the best times and worst times to trade. So first hour, last hour is where we get most of the volatility. But when it comes to money management, it all comes down to finding out which one is going to give you the least amount of risk with the high amount of reward. Now, when we get back to that stock CMTL, you'll notice that here you have a stock that's up 81%, traded 82 million shares already. And the most important part of the risk management here is look at the spread. You're talking about a penny spread and the stock moved about $2 here at the open, which is the most volatile time. And then we're getting now into the close where we're getting the second biggest push right here. So once again, you don't have to risk and worry about the name brand of the stock, but more, more importantly, the money management part about it is what's going to take you to get in and what's going to take you to get out of it. So when it comes to trading these stocks, you have to make sure that you look at the spreads, you look at the tier sizes, you look and see if you can get in and out of it. But as we go into the second T, you want a stock that has a good trend because the trend is your friend. You don't want to buck that trend. And that is another big mistake why half the people who trade in the market lose because they're too focused on the brand name or what's moving. And that's not what makes you very successful in trading. Remember, traders have to be consistent. And being consistent is risking the least amount of money with the high amount of reward. Now, set some realistic goals when you want to trade. As a beginner, listen, you don't have to trade a lot of shares. That's a big mistake. You don't have to start jump, jumping up and trade, oh, because I have you know $25,000 and the stock's a dollar, I could buy 25,000 shares of it. That's a very big mistake. It's not how much money you have. It's building your confidence because we do things on a point system. Listen, everyone always wants to know, how do you get started in trading? Well, basically, it's not about just paper trading, which is practice trading, but eventually paper trading is only good as long as you get in comfortable with the software. Once you're done with that, then you want to start just trading very small lots. Maybe, hell, maybe one share of the stock just to get the butterflies out. But you have to know what it's like to be in a position. And the thing is, how do you upgrade and go to the next level and trade 10 shares, 100 shares, 500 shares, 1,000 shares? Well, listen, it's all about being consistent because you're not going to be able to handle if a stock, you're in the wrong position in the wrong stock and you trade something, a lot of shares and that stock goes down, chances are you're not going to probably get out of it. But if you bought a very, very little shares and you're just doing to have fun because that's what trading is all about, you'll get comfortable getting in and out of it. You got to build your confidence. You have to know what it's like to get in and out of positions, but you got to start small and take baby steps. Remember, there's one guarantee I always give my traders. You and I will die one day and the stock market will never go out of business. So don't rush it. Be patient. You probably want to do this as a career, as a trader, but you have to be patient and just kind of build your confidence up to it. Some of the great tips of being a new trader also is like I mentioned earlier, don't trade that many shares. Work your way up to things. Make sure you start small. Practice on demo mode, but don't practice too long because not gonna let it's not gonna be reality. Maybe two weeks. Just get comfortable with the platform. Then start working small. If you got to trade one share, trade one share. 
but it's it's a lot better than trading zero shares. Make sure you take notes. Make sure you see that you're up in points. Don't count the money. The money is irrelevant. Biggest tip that I always covered and I always looked at some my traders that always taught me, my mentors, they said, Fausto, you know what? It's not how how much money you up. How much are you up in points? Because you're if you were up 50 cents today on a hundred on a hundred shares, it doesn't sound like a lot. But if you were up 50 cents on a thousand shares, it adds up pretty quickly. So the thing is to get to that thousand, you got to be good at a hundred. So one of the big tips that you always want to start off with is you start very small, be very consistent, maybe get some journals out there. We give us traders journals all the time to kind of analyze and see if they're progressing, but start with a journal. If you don't have one, write it, analyze yourself. And every week as you get better and at the end of the month, if you have a consistency of where you want your goals are as number wise, then you work your way up the ladder by trading more shares. If you see that you're not doing well over the course of the month, take a step back, trade less shares. That means you're trading too hard and too aggressive. Now, there are a lot of great educators out there, and I know there's a lot of bad ones too. And the only way you're gonna know that is you have to try all of them. And some of you might be so stuck on one specific market saying, hey, you know what? I like options, but you know what? Options is not that easy to trade. It might be because you're educated by the wrong person. Maybe you never want to get into day trading because you heard bad things about it. Well, who really trained you? So I always kind of tell everybody, there are so many great webinars out there. There are some great videos out there, like you're watching one right now. But the thing is, you got to connect with the person. Make, you know, Find out who really trained them. What is their background? Because you really want to know a little history on the person. So if you ever want to find out who's a really good trader and a good educator, I always tell everyone, Go look at the Google reviews, see what brokerage firms endorse them, and don't just go out there and just read what you read on the internet because there is a lot of fake news out there when it comes to trading. But you know, see, listen to friends out there. See other people have taken classes with them before. Try to connect with somebody. But great traders never stop learning, even myself. I've learned something new every day. I never stop learning. I like my style. It worked with me. But the way I got to my style today is – I went out there and I tried a little bit of everything and I thought I liked something. I thought I was going to like Forex, but I didn't. I thought I was going to like futures and I tried it, but I didn't. But what I, why I'd like to stock, trade the stock market, it kind of, I, I watch it every day on TV. I see them talking about it all the time in the news and I kind of relate to it and I kind of build on top of it. But it took me several different instructors to kind of learn. And the big thing you have to learn as a trader, the most important thing, is not learning how to make money. The way you learn to be a good trader is you have to learn how to lose first. Once you fix that, the winners take care of themselves. And that's what you kind of learn from gurus out there. You always want to say, okay, what should I not do? What are those mistakes? Because it's not about what makes you better than this person and that person. It's what, what made you protect your losses better than this person versus that one. And that's how you succeed in this business is losing. Stop losing. And then when you figure that out, the winners take care of themselves. Another major practice when it comes to trading is it can get emotional and you can't get emotional when it comes to trading. And that is caused by you're trading way too many shares. You're trading something too volatile, something too fast. Take a step back. Listen, part of trading, when we talk about tradable and non-tradables, that there are the first T, like I mentioned earlier, where stocks have you know, that are just way too volatile for you. And you just don't know what it's doing. And you're just kind of guessing. And you don't want to guess. You should know if the stock is going up. You should know if it's going to be upticking to another price. You should feel confident that if you are a little slow, you could still get at that price. And sometimes it might seem slow. But once you get used to, you'll get the training wheels off and you'll be able to trade things a lot quicker. But tip of the most, one of the most important tips I always, always taught, and I had to learn eventually the hard way because I didn't have the technology that a lot of you have today is you got to know just how basically what it's like to be in stocks that we call in different categories, category one, two, three, four, and five. The higher the category, the more volatile, the more money you can make, but it's the more money you can lose. And you'll find that out as you trade. So when you go out there and trade, like we mentioned earlier, you know, with some of the examples, some of the stocks, when you have very thick price levels on the level two and you have a very, very wide spread, that's where you make the big mistake. 
But the only way you're going to learn that is trading small lot shares. See, when you're looking at a stock, when you're, seeing, when you're looking at a stock like Apple, you'll notice that the stock is moving so volatile. And this is a very high risk stock and it can get very emotional. But you hear all the good news. You're hearing Apple is having this really nice run. You probably missed it and like, oh, is it too late? Listen, it's never too late to buy these stocks. But when it comes to being a day trader, it's all about risk to reward. Do you want to go out there and trade a $200 stock that might have a 10, 15 cent spread, or would you rather trade something that has a lot less risk with a very tight spread like this one that's up 77%. Now remember, every day is a trading day and every day that list will change and every day you'll find new gainers and losers because that's what day traders look at. But there's a time when you wanna trade a brand name like a stock like NVIDIA, like a stock like a Tesla, or maybe a stock like a PLTR, you know, that is probably five times less with a very tight spread with deep price levels because it's all about risk to reward. Now, part of the second T with the chart patterns is very, very important too because you might want to trade a stock that is got a good volatility but also has that good trend depending on what time of the day is because there are stocks that will be stuck there all day as a day trader and that could be frustrating. What ends up happening, you'll be over trade, you'll buy more shares. Like an example, like we're looking at PLTR, very nice moving stock. Look at the trend. It's been going up all day. This is what you're looking for because the trend is your friend. They, we say, don't buck that trend. Just like stocks like CMTL, nice push, nice move over the course of the day. Then, But then you have a stock like Tesla, Maybe you could short, stock is trending down, but you might get stuck in a stock like SIRI and if you look over the course of the day, has the gone nowhere. So everything has a trend. L-R-H-C, stock had a big move, great trend. But you get a stock like Mara, does look like I have a nice trend, but it didn't have as much volatility. So when it comes to trading, fellow traders, it's all about following not only the tradable and non-tradable theory, but also what is the trend of the stock. Because you get involved in a stock that doesn't have a good trend, you'll get stuck on it, and then you'll end up buying something else, and then you'll be, you'll, your portfolio is going to get be overwhelmed with a ton of stocks out there, and then all of a sudden, you're buying, you're selling, you know where to get in, where to get out, and that will just cause overtrading and more confusion and more losses. Now, working with a custom journal is also one of the great tools of letting you know of how you're progressively doing better. And we have our own custom journals that we're happy to always give our traders out there. You can get it on our website or you can always send us an email and we'll be happy to send it to you. But we have two types of journals. We have daily journals and we also have monthly journals. Here we have a monthly journal. So depending on the day of when you started, let's say it's the second and I end up being, or the third and I end up being up, uh, I don't know, $58. And you'll notice how the graph is starting to calculate and let you know, hey, opening balance was around 3000 And right now we're up about close to $1,500 going into this month. And it also tells you what your average trades you're doing, PSL, uh, p &L, profit and loss, your winning percentage, your factor, your average losing versus winning. And this just kind of lets you know, are you progressively getting better or are you progressively getting worse? As we have right here is a daily journal. And what's nice about a daily journal is that you also want to kind of train yourself a little bit what made you better in one trade versus the other. And that's why you'll basically want to see the reason for that trade, what time you got in, how many shares, where you got in, where you get out. Maybe you want to track your commissions. But by doing that, you know, it also gives you a sense of and trains you what made that trade so good and what made it so bad. Reason for exiting. Maybe the stock hit a big iceberg order. Maybe it hit the high of the day. Maybe you just want to take a nice little profit. But it's always nice to kind of track on the daily journal because it's not – going out there and just trading for the day and washing up your hands, say, I'm done for the day. The way you become better, it's like a sport. 
okay? You're looking at Sunday football, okay? You just don't wake up on Sunday and think you're going to play and be successful. They practice from Monday to Saturday, and they play on Sunday. They look at tapes. They look at strategies. They practice. Practice, education, and training is what gets you better when the market or go, uh, when the market is open. Because let me tell you, I would probably say 90% of your time should be spent more on education than trading. With any other school or getting education out there too is it's not about the training. It's also about the mentoring. It's also about being involved with a good group of traders. And here at Cybertrain University, we have thousands of traders all over the world. And the big thing is that they're here trading with you and the instructors are trading with you. And if you have a mentor, you should have the same thing. So it's not just taking a couple of courses and learning about these tools. You don't want to be at home by yourself, trading by yourself, trying to figure it out. Am I doing it right? If I'm not doing it right, it's a team effort. And when I was a big, when I was a trader as a market maker, I used to trade in, in a, bo a boardroom with hundreds of traders. Yeah, and the big thing is sometimes you learn from the good ones, you learn from the bad ones. But for you, not having that convenience of coming and working for a professional trading company, you could still do it online. And there are many of them out there. So one of the big things I recommend before you do make an investment in your education, anybody, try their workshops, try to look in their room. And most importantly, see how everyone else is doing. See what those traders and how they work and interact with each other. See if you relate to them. See if it's your type of you know, if, if it's that type of your atmosphere, some people might not like the camaraderie in there. Some people, it's their style, maybe different age groups, whatever it may be. But if you're going to learn from somebody, definitely be, should be part of their professional trading room. There are so many brokerage firms out there to choose from. And a lot of you are probably thinking about what makes one versus the other. And it's kind of hard to say because there are some of you here from different parts of the world and certain brokerage firms only do business in, certain par uh, in parts of your country. But it also depends on what kind of trader you are. If you're specifically a day trader, there's probably one of two of them that are very good at what they do. If you're just an options trader, then those two will not be good for you. Those other two will be. Or maybe you do futures or maybe just do Forex. There's a specific brokerage firm is better for those. So what you have to look at is see who, who is very popular in your country and see what most people are using. And you definitely want to uh, basically want to demo them. Now, I will be doing a video regarding about what makes one brokerage firm better than the other. But just in a nutshell, what makes some of them better? Try to deal with, uh, deal with the big brand name companies, the more popular ones. Most importantly, if you have a mentor, try to use what they're using, okay? They wouldn't be recommending them if they thought that they were not that good. Because um, most of us gurus are probably uh, don't work for these brokerage firms, but we do want you as our student to have the best platform that we're very comfortable in using because it's easy for us to explain it to you. But like I said, it all depends on what part of the world you are. If you're from Canada, US, UK, Australia, Germany, wherever it is, um, different brokerage firms only do business at certain countries because their government only allows it. Part of trading too, and the mistakes that people make, is they overtrade. And that's the issue you have to worry about, chasing stocks, averaging down. Some of the cardinal rules when it comes to trading, what people make big mistakes, is they don't know how to control losses. And sometimes they feel like maybe it'll come back. And the only reason why they're making this mistake is because they don't want to take a loss. And I'll give you a clear example. We've been having, probably everybody's familiar with it, but we're talking about a stock like GameStop. And when you look at a stock like GameStop right here, you'll notice that this stock obviously had a big rally. And sure enough, as that stock had a big run, it ran from $10 to $60, it came back down. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of hype. If it was the mean stocks, if it was Roaring Kitty that pushed it, but this stock is no different than any other stock that's out there that trades every day. But using as an example, one of the mistakes that people make is they'll chase a stock, they'll get caught up on the hype, they'll average down. So I would like to leave you with two very big carnal rules. Number one, never ever hold a position overnight because you'll want to take a loss. And number two, don't ever, ever average down one of the biggest sucker bets in the trading market. So when it comes to trading and being very successful, you have to always have a trading strategy. You got to have a good game plan. You have to journal yourself. You have to focus on those three T's 
and never make those cardinal mistakes, which is averaging down and holding overnight positions. But we all need mentors. And remember, you're going to need more than one. And you don't have to settle with one person just because you took a class with that person and think you had to make it work. Listen, we all get second opinions going to the doctor. We all go to different car dealerships because one deal is probably better than the other. It's all relative, even in trading. But going out there and try to be your own mechanic, to try to be your own doctor, doesn't really work. And I tell you the truth, that's not a person I would want to do business with. The, the way you learn to be very successful is you have to surround yourself with good traders, something very good, has a very good reputation in the industry, and learn and be part of their team being logged into their trading room and have that strategy that works for you. But to be very good in the trading community, remember, it doesn't take that long. Usually it takes more than 30 to 60 days for you to catch wind. If you don't get it within that short period of time, then chances are, number one, you probably have a bad mentor, or two, it's just not your style, okay? And that's okay, because that's why you're here. Listen, we've all gone to school before, from kindergarten to college. We could probably remember the greatest teachers, the greatest uh, you know, professors out there, and we could know who, who the gave, us, gave us the worst advice and the best advice. And believe me, that is what made us succeed in trading. And that's what you have to look into a mentor when it comes to trading. So when it goes out there, when, when you go out there and, and want to learn how to trade in today's markets, just make sure you do your homework. Make sure you take the time to learn. Just don't go out there and think you're going to figure it out. Because the worst thing that could happen to you is that you make money in trading. And then all of a sudden you think it's pretty easy. And it's not. Because a lot of I've been doing this for many, many years. I've been through the internet bubble, I've been through the financial crisis, I've been through Hurricane Sandy, 9-11, COVID, and I've seen people that have done great, and I've seen that people that have done horrible, I've seen people that start from here, and all of a sudden, they are out of business, and you don't wanna be part of that 90% failure rate. So when it comes to trading, do your homework, subscribe to our channel, maybe we'll be the right fit for you. Enjoy our videos, because believe me, there are a lot more that we do that we offer here that might fit your style, because if you wanna learn how to day trade, that's what cyber training is all about. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully this video helped you out with your trading to get started as a beginner. And then if you enjoy it, please make sure you give us a thumbs up, like the channel, ring that bell, and we'll see you in some more upcoming videos. Happy trading.